What the fuck is this piece of shit? Welcome back, everypony, and happy late New Year. I hope everyone had a good 2023 and is praying for a 2024 that doesn't cause nuclear war. You've read the title of this video, and you know what you're in for, so let's just get right into it. A lot of the interests that I've had since childhood has stuck with me to this day. Things like Sonic the Hedgehog, Pokemon, and My Little Pony are still pieces of media that I hold close and dear to my heart. But in the deep crevices of my decaying mind lies a show that has turned into a parasitic beast, always melting my brain. Miraculous Ladybug, Adventures of Ladybug and Cat Noir. <sighs> I have a love-hate relationship with the show, okay? What kind of show is this? <laughs> it's a kid's show, obviously. I'm sure most people aren't a stranger to Miraculous. You've probably seen these monsters at least like once in your life. Or you were like me, who got extremely attached to the show when it first came out, and now it's attached to you like a demonic entity latching onto you and won't go away until it sucks the life out of your body and feasts on your dried up co- I don't want this. Oh, yeah. If you have been living under a rock, in 2015, Miraculous Ladybug launched as a French cartoon produced by Zag Toon, but most people remember Thomas Astruck, who is the creator of the show. Back with another milk. Help! A quick summary for the show, in my words, is uh, the story follows Marinette de Peng Chang, a baker's daughter, and Air. Erin? Shut the fuck up. Try again, try again. A quick summary for the show in my words is, uh, the story follows Marinette de Pang Chang, a baker's daughter, and Adrienne Negrest, a fashion model in Paris, and their adventures as Ladybug and Cat Noir, when they're gifted magical beings called Kwamis that give them the ability to become superheroes. Marinette likes Adrian, Adrian likes Ladybug, um, I think Cat Noir and Marinette have chemistry? Hawk Moth is there too, I guess? Uh, I won't explain the entire show, it's way too long to talk about, and, and if you are curious about the show, you should definitely check it out for yourself, just check out all the insanity for yourself, please, please, I, I can't suffer through this alone. Now I loved this show as a kid, and I made sure everyone around me knew I loved it. I still remember going on the Miraculous Ladybug Amino and making like crazy OCs that would later become relics in my life, and I still look fondly on them despite the the history I have with Amino. I think Miraculous Ladybug looked pretty promising when it first came out with season 1 and a bit of season 2. Or maybe it was my kid brain just being excited for the next new thing with the with the mix of nostalgia. Yeah, that's probably it. I still remember when the 2D animated trailer came out on YouTube and I could not peel my eyes away from the screen. Even when it turned out the show would be 3D animated, that didn't change much for me. Mostly because I had like a pebble and a hamster spinning on a wheel in my head and I was really too busy being autistic about a blue hedgehog all my life to worry about, but that's completely unrelated. I can still go back and watch the first season and not burn my eyes immediately, you know? It was pretty okay for the time. Also, Stormy Weather is still the best episode ever in the series animation-wise. Anyways, back on topic. It was a magical girl show that just so happened to be French, but it still played some of the anime tropes pretty straight. Like, for example, clumsy female lead, romance subplot, mysterious boy character, I guess. It was your typical shoujo, just not exactly. You see, little baby bunny thought Mr. Ashtrug and I agreed that the show was gonna be similar to something like Precure or Sailor Moon. So why the fuck do we have this Marvel Civil War as poster for the final season? Like I said before, I just can't get into every single detail and timeline of events that went wrong with the show. We'd be here forever if I did that. Plus, there's like a ton of other YouTubers that have already done so and do it way better than I could ever do. I'll leave the links down in the description for their channels or videos that I've personally watched and enjoyed. Really, all I do is just draw my crazy OCs and I'm way too lazy for that effort. So, what I can do is talk about how I'd rewrite Marinette's character and change her designs. I'm like the character design monster. I go crazy anytime I'm able to draw or talk about it. I'm autistic. <laughs> I'm autistic. Okay, we're gonna end with that.
right off the bat, I want to say I'm no professional designer. I'm a professional hater. I hate the miraculous character designs, simply put. Mainly the superhero designs. That's not to say they're like the absolute bottom of the barrel, except Rena Rouge. Oh my god, her design is just peak. Who the fuck, who the fuck designed uh, Vesperia, by the way? I want to have a word with you. The thing about miraculous designs is that they have potential, but oftentimes that potential is just never reached. It's like, it's like they're digging for diamonds and just stop halfway. It upsets me even more knowing the concept designs were so good compared to what we get in the actual show. If I had to make a tier list from the best we're getting in this show to dog water, Ladybug would be all the way down in shit water tier. Along with Vesperia and Hawk Moth's mini design because oh my god I hate this design. I don't know why did they change his first season design? PURPLE GAY! <sighs> But as much as I hate Ladybug's design, I want to start with explaining Marinette's civilian design first. It's not the worst thing imaginable, definitely like not the worst in the show. I'm honestly just upset we didn't get what we see in the concept art. I would have loved to see her in overalls, so I gave her some. I didn't want to change her design too drastically since it's like not the most horrendous thing in the show and never will be, but it can definitely be improved. I decided to give Marinette like more naturally colored hair to differentiate from her superhero identity. Then we don't have to have the stupid who can Ladybug possibly be moments in the show. Cause it's obvious. It's very obvious to every two year old that watches this, including me, I'm two. Another thing I did is give her brown eyes. I'm so tired of blue eyes. Please give her brown contacts. I'm so, I'm so tired of it. She haunts my nightmare. She looks at me through the window. I'm scared. Please give her some eye contacts. I'd go more into the changes with Marinette's design, but there's not really much I can say. I did change her civilian hairstyle to be almost like a heart shape, sort of. Uh, I'll put a little like doodle of what I imagine it would look like in the show or whatever. Yeah, little heart, very cute, very cute. But don't worry, her pigtails do return in the superhero design, obviously. I was not gonna take that out. It's too good, it's too good. Another small detail I added was just like a few little bandages just to signify her clumsy nature. And I think it could tie into her being a fashion designer too. I mean, I know that I would get like cuts and bruises and sh not bruises, but you know what I mean. Cuts, designing outfits, and then sewing them all together. With the original ladybug design, I see the potential. I really do. The original design is very simple and recognizable. It's a bright red and not easy to miss, and she stands out from the other superheroes, so you can immediately clock in on her. <sighs> but uh, I've seen Thomas Asterix many concept designs for her, and they seem to look really good. I mean, I think she still looks like shit, but like, it's better. It's better than what we got. All my poor girl gets is polka dots on a skin tight suit and gets called a watermelon in the movie. Around season 4 or 5, I think, she's given like a new outfit, but like only after she uses her lucky charm. It's not even permanent. It's wasted potential if you ask me. Out of all the different designs Ladybug gets, her main design really is the worst. If you've seen the new Miraculous special into the Miraculous verse, um, then you know about Shadybug's design, and it's a massive improvement to our Ladybug. Once again, these better Ladybug designs have something in common. They aren't just a boring polka dot suit. There's these like black parts in the suit that sort of cut it up and the amount of dots, uh, it's just not that much. Like, she doesn't look like a fucking... <sighs> I was about to call her a ladybug. That's literally her fucking name. <laughs> Once again, these better ladybug designs have something in common. They aren't just a bright red polka dot suit. There's more to it. There's, like, I don't know how to explain, there's these black parts in this suit that sort of cut up the amount of dots, and I think that works really well and shaped the design better. Now she looks like an actual superhero and not like her ballet suit got brutally sabotaged by Chloe. There's other Ladybug adjacent designs that add more elements, very lightly, sort of like gold accents. I think that also works as well. Things like, uh, Dragon Li- not Dragon Lady, Dragon Bug and Lady Bee. So I took those elements and I mixed it together for this one. I also enjoyed how Ladybug's yo-yo looked in the movie with the gold accents, so I added that to the design as well. TLDR, more gold and black accents. Maybe you don't get it and that's okay. Just know. <laughs> I'm right. I'm sure I'm not alone in this, but 
I've always been uncomfortable with her simple skin tight suit. I get what they were going for, but it just never sit right with me. I don't like it. It might have to do with how her general model looks in the show, but I don't know. I think there should be more going on for her design so it's easier to look at. I don't know if I'm explaining it well, but whatever. This is my first genuine YouTube video, so like, give me a break. Another part of her design I think would have been super cute is her ladybug wings. For me personally, I made it sort of like a cape. I mainly based it off like Red Robin, aka Tim Drake, mm-hmm, all my DC fans out there. <laughs> the idea also came from how the Cat Noir belt has like a tail, like the belt's literally like a tail, so why can't Ladybug have a cool cape that's treated like wings? Another missed opportunity, Mr. Astro. I also decided to give Tiki wings, cause she's a bug, it was cute, it was cute. That's all for these redesigns now. Now we have to go to something more horrendous. The writing. It's no surprise that the miraculous writing is a mess. None of it feels concrete. The Cat Blanc episode was based off stories the fans were writing first. And that episode is ass. They're just throwing random ideas around left and right, but they can't commit hard enough and actually have to make a dent in the status quo. They're scared of that, so they always find a loophole to keep things unchanging. With Marinette's character, it has been handled poorly by the writers for years, to the point where people call her a Mary Sue, and I see where they're coming from. I'm not a fan of the term Mary Sue, calling a character a Mary Sue always feels like a low blow in many cases, but in this case, I see why it's used. Marinette is almost always seen as in the right, or she just doesn't get consequences for certain actions. Wow, it looks so real. The wax is nearly as hot as skin. <laughs> it even smells exactly like him! Yeah. So, let's just start with the basics of Marinette's character. The bare bones of Marinette's characters is this. She's a kid who has a dream to become a fashion designer. She's a bit of a klutz and has a crush on a boy named Adrian, and she helps her parents in her bakery. In her ladybug persona, she's a very heroic person, and she's able to take on a leadership role. She works very well alongside Cat Noir, who's totally not Adrian, and aspects of her creative mind help her use her lucky charm in various situations. That's the very basic element of Marinette's character. But what's missing? Depth. Marinette has barely, like, any depth. In fact, most of the Miraculous cast lack that depth, in my opinion. I know, I know, it's a kid's cartoon. It's literally a show made for children who watch Kokomoan and Garten and Ban Ban turns into babies animations. But, counterpoint, this is my channel, and I love complaining about things I'm autistic about. It's so obvious Miraculous Ladybug has a story, they want to tell it, but the poor writing, the horribly developed characters, it hinders it all. And as a super nerd, I must fix this massive error. Thomas Astruck, I'm looking at you. I know you blocked my friend on Twitter and I'm coming for you. In season 5, we finally got some more backstory on Marinette, but for me, it was far too late to actually care enough anymore. Especially after I know there could have been a redemption on Chloe, but someone wants her to be the devil incarnate. So that happened. So much of this lore should have been established way earlier on, and for me to actually care. But don't worry, <laughs> that's why I'm here. With this rewrite, I'll start with Marinette's personality and work my way throughout her life. Parents, superhero form, obviously, yada yada. I'll also try to rewrite some of the Kwame lore and the abilities, specifically towards Tiki. I won't go through, like, everything for the rewrite because that would take eons and I don't hate myself that much to put myself through it. So I'll do what I can. So, Marinette. She's kind of a creep in the show. Her creepiness is definitely just a side effect of using the average anime tropes, but the difference between the actual tropes and Marinette just being a weirdo is I don't think other girls in shoujos have their crush's entire schedule written down. Stalk them by using the location on your phone to the point where you'd have to take a fucking plane just to follow them, and even sniff or try to kiss a wax statue of them, even though it's not even a statue. That is your crush in the flesh! <sighs> Sorry, this aspect of Marinette isn't something quirky. It's just gross. It's one thing to be an awkward person around your crush, 
but it's another thing to completely disregard your crush's feelings and then attempt to ruin a girl's chances of just getting slightly close to your crush using your alter ego basically to bully her even if she is just a liar so let's just throw this version of marinette out the window For this rewrite, I'll keep the basic aspects of her character, such as her kindness, the interest in fashion, baking, clumsiness, etc. However, I do want to add a few of my own little headcanon traits to her. She's not only a klutz, but she's gullible too. She has trouble understanding jokes and social cues. Maybe during her first week of school, Chloe uses her gullible nature to her advantage, making fun of her without Marinade even realizing and just happy to have someone to talk to her. It wouldn't be till our girl Alia stands up for her that she realized that Chloe is actually just bullying her this whole time. It'd also lead to Alia and Marinette's new friendship forming. Alia being one of her closest friends and her knowing about the secret identity before anyone else does is something I think is really cute in the show. Alia would have all sorts of excuses for Marinette whenever she's late for class after fighting in Akuma. With Marinette's original dynamic with Adrian, I feel like we just need to throw the entire relationship away. Instead of stalking him, she learns about him through researching on the fashion industry and learning about Gabriel Agreste. So imagine her surprise when she sees THE Adrian Agreste goes to her school. She'd put Adrian on a pedestal as her crush, but once the two start to become friends, she starts to lose that view of him and instead begins seeing him as an equal. Someone just as silly and awkward as her. It'd be cute to see the two realize their similarities and differences and still fall in love despite that. Or not fall in love. Who knows. I completely forgot to add this, um, I want to age them up. So Marinette and the rest are about like 15 to 17 in this. I know that doesn't seem like a big change, but I was just never comfortable with them being like 13 or 14. That's all I want to say. I don't want her to be from Paris. I think her starting out from somewhere in China like Shanghai and moving to Paris in the beginning of the show would work well and making her an outcast and a newbie. That's just my silly headcanon though. With this, not only is she in an unfamiliar home, but she'll be surrounded by new people in her life at school. And this also removes the random bullshit trauma they gave her in like season 4 or 5, I don't care to remember. And it wasn't even present before this in any other season. They just, they try to make her a deep character, but don't even know how to do it. With influence from her husband, Tom, Marinette's mom, Sabine, comes to Paris to start her new bakery. They'll start off very small, and it'd make more sense for Marinette to work alongside her parents in this case. They'll need help with the new business. Marinette would have heard all about Paris from Tom during their time in Shanghai, hearing about the fashion designer Gabriel Agreste and his famous modeling son, and researching about it herself. She'd gain a passion for the art and plan on becoming a fashion designer, maybe even working for Gabriel. But she'll have to juggle fashion, family business, and school all together. Oh, and being a superhero. My girl is stressed. Something in the original show was Marinette becoming the new guardian of the miraculous, and just becoming more stressed with that responsibility in her life. It could have been a really good plotline in my opinion, but not much was done with it. Outside of the hero stuff, I imagine her relationships with her parents and other people would get strained. She'd focus too much on being the guardian, not focusing on herself enough. That leads to several confrontations with those she loves, and she'll have to decide if she wants to open up about her life or continue to keep herself closed off for their safety. Maybe the show does handle this subtly, but I don't think it handles it well. It feels like they want to keep these deep, important, thoughtful storylines, but just don't know how to write it. But how does Marinette even become Ladybug in this rewrite? Well, I have to talk about how the origins work then. Speaking of origins, I feel like I'm forgetting someone. Fuck, I forgot Master Fu. I don't blame anyone if they forgot that Miraculous originally had this old Master Splinter type character in the show. They basically write him out by making him completely forget ever being the Guardian and just leaving guardianship to a literal child. So trying to completely rewrite Master Fu is a little hard when there's basically nothing to go off of, but I'll do my best. Master Fu is the original guardian of the Miraculous, but when the Butterfly Miraculous goes missing, he's forced to use his own Miraculous and find who's done this and solve the case. Except, due to his old age, this guy's like 186, he knows he can't do this alone. But he's a stubborn old man and he'll do this alone. This will cause him to seek out this mysterious enemy that stole the butterfly and engage in battle, getting injured and attempt to escape. But the enemy is still after him, so Fu has to figure out a solution. If he dies now, he'll lose the miraculous, and this person will be able to use the powers for their own selfish desires. He can't have that, so he thinks of a last minute solution. He sets two Kwamis free as he escapes to the sewers, Kwami of Destruction and the Kwami of Creation, Plague and Tiki. The two are told just one command, 
find the ones who can save Paris. And that's the last of Master Fu. For now. I don't know. The Kwamis are on the search for humans that can take the role of a hero, and it's up to them and their view on people. With this rewrite, it's a Kwami's decision on who becomes the heroes. Master Fu doesn't have to like almost get hit by a train or a bus, car, whatever it was, and then Marinette doesn't have to fucking push him out the way, you know? Imagine if she didn't push him out the way. He would have done that for nothing and just died. That would have been funny though. Anyways, I believe Tiki would feel pity for Marinette when she first finds her. Maybe disguising herself as an actual ladybug or human and noticing her get bullied. But she sees hope in this girl, so she plans on blessing her with the power of creation, even if it wasn't who Master Fu would want. It's Tiki's decision. I think the rest of the origin would play out very similar to the actual origin episodes, like Marinette being freaked out by Tiki, being confused and scared when she first becomes Ladybug, then meeting Ka Noir, who, oh cool, I probably need to redesign and rewrite at some point. Uh, can we just skip to the Kwamis? Okay, this can be the quickest section of the video, since this is just coming up with new lore for these creatures, and that should be easy. The show does give us a few things to work with, such as the Kwamis all being like these god-like beings and sort of being uh, related to emotions or abstract ideas like creation. There are supposedly different versions of the Kwamis, like how in Shanghai there's the Renlings, which makes me question things because the Kwamis are already from the Chinese Miracle Box, which are based off the Chinese Zodiacs. So why are the Renlings also based off the Chinese Zodiacs? Wouldn't it make more sense for the Renlings to be from a different part of the world or just have the Kwamis be from France? Oh wait, I almost forgot. America has the... the knockoff Avengers? In the New York special, they have these superheroes who don't use Miraculouses and actually have superpowers. I thought what made the Miraculous Ladybug special is that it's just Cat Noir and Ladybug as superheroes, not Ladybug, Cat Noir, and Lesbian Superman and Batman. Not that I'm complaining though. I don't even want to make myself think too hard on the lore of these things, so we'll just ignore the Renlings and we'll ignore the superheroes, and we'll ignore how original Kwamis are like, there's 18 of them. So let's just blow them all up. A lot of the Kwamis feel very unnecessary and are really only here so Marinette's entire class can have a Kwami and then they like have it for one episode. It's not important. So I'll just focus on Tiki for my sanity and maybe a little bit on Flag, but he's not that important right now. I still like the idea of the Kwamis just being these godly entities taking on these cute chibi forms. It's very funny to me. It reminds me of Luna and Artemis from Sailor Moon and Kyubei from Madoka Magica. I really like it, it's very cute. But I think they could use other forms to blend into society. This is mainly just an excuse for me to give Tiki a human design. I mean, I just love the idea of a really funny centuries old god and then like this teenager just hanging out. It's funny to me. Tiki would also have a more simple ladybug form and just fly around being silly. I think they showed that in the Miraculous movie? I'm not entirely sure. But yeah. Um, okay here, show the Tiki human design. BOOM! Tiki has two abilities, good luck and creation. With good luck, she literally brings luck to those around her. You just bought a lottery ticket and bumped into a lady with bright red hair? Well get ready, cause you're about to win! Tiki is also able to create, but I've decided to give her limitations since the showrunners simply forgot about the limits. In the show, it's almost as if Tiki can just create about whatever she wants, and while I think that could be interesting, the show just doesn't really do a lot with it, or they use it in ways to just wipe away little plot holes that they've made. Creation can put a strain on Tiki. And whenever Ladybug uses her lucky charm, it's why she'll have only a limited amount of time before she transforms after using it. The bigger the creation, the less time Ladybug will have. So Tiki can fix buildings and heal, but she can't create new life. Whenever the show decides to pull a Miraculous Ladybug! and fixes a ton of buildings and suddenly brings back people, it won't be bringing back new people anymore, only fixing the buildings. So there are consequences if Ladybug isn't careful when saving Paris. 
With healing, I think Tiki would mainly use it on plants and animals. But if Marinette is injured after battle, she can heal her too. Oh yeah, and the heroes actually get injured after battles and stuff. Eh, la, la, they're just gonna have to thug it out. Don't worry about it. I don't have much to say about Tiki other than that. I still like her goody two-shoes vibe in the show, and it's a good contrast to Plague's more snarky attitude. Um, take this as a sliver of what I'd do if I had control of Miraculous. If I'm strong enough, and maybe this uh, video gets enough views and comments and stuff, I'll make a part two for the certain green-eyed model that's in the show. I hope you all enjoyed this video. It was supposed to come out a lot earlier, and I apologize for that. Um, I know a lot of this was just me stuttering and rambling. The show does things to me, but in the future, I'd love to talk about medias that I actually enjoy without a grip of a decaying show digging to my skin. Let me know what you thought, though. Did you like my redesign? Did you like my rewrite? Did you not like it? Do you want me to redesign or rewrite any other characters in the show? Let me know. I'd really, really love to know. I'm so serious. I don't know what to say anymore. Um, I forgot how to end a video. Um, I don't know what to say now. If you want to follow my socials, they're all in the description below. Uh, go read my webcomic, Our Paradise, on Comic Fury. Okay, bye! Yeah, I've been with that. This I see we're lonely.